If you take insulin for type one or type two diabetes, you got to know this. And this is something they don't really explain at the doctor's office when you start taking insulin. Oh, hey, before we get going, like this video, subscribe to this channel. I appreciate your support. Okay, here's the problem. I hear from people every week with type one and type two diabetes who are taking insulin and they're frustrated because they're having really frequent lows or they're going high every single day and they're like, what am I doing wrong? Or worse, I hear from them saying, hey, I'm going low every night. I'm hitting 50 every night in my sleep and I'm waiting for my next appointment with my endocrinologist three months down the road before I do anything about it, before I get any help. Your insulin doses are just an estimate, a guess, a very educated guess, but a guess nonetheless. Your rapid acting dose to help you cover meals and correct highs, that's just an estimate. It might not be right, or it might be right for some parts of the day, but not other parts of the day. Your long acting dose or the basal rates in your insulin pump, those are just an estimate. They need to be fine tuned. Your doctor looked at your weight, your age, and your lifestyle and tried to figure out what this person probably needs for a long acting background insulin dose. They were guessing, an educated guess, but a guess nonetheless. So if your blood sugar is going low every night at midnight, or if your blood sugar is high every afternoon, it's not your fault. It's not that you're a bad diabetic or that you're doing something wrong. Your insulin doses might not be accurate for your body's needs. And honestly, this is the hardest part of taking insulin because we are trying to micromanage something that our body should be naturally adjusting all day long. Imagine if your pancreas was working properly. Your pancreas doesn't have an insulin to carb ratio for dosing at breakfast versus dosing at lunch or dinner. Your pancreas simply responds to rising blood sugar levels and automatically produces enough insulin to keep your blood sugars in range. That's what a working pancreas does. Now you have been tasked with being that working pancreas and your doctor was trying to guess what your body's gonna roughly need throughout the day. But the problem is there's all these other variables that affect your insulin sensitivity from one hour to the next. And that's why this is so hard. That's why this is about so much more than simply eating a healthy diet and walking every day. We are trying to meet our body's needs, constantly anticipating and constantly reacting. All right, so what do you do about it? How do you know if your insulin doses are accurate? And spoiler alert, they change frequently. So as soon as you do get your insulin doses figured out, it doesn't mean that that's what they're gonna be for the next 10, 20 years, or even just the next year. They might need a little bit of a change. Or if a big thing in your life changes, then they might need a little bit more of a change. Okay, so imagine you're going low every single night at midnight. This doesn't mean that you have to endure lows every single night at midnight just because you take insulin. It means one of your doses is too high. It means you're getting too much insulin either in the rapid acting dose that you're taking before bed. And you can look at that math. Rapid acting insulin hangs out in your system for anywhere from three to five hours. So if you're going low at midnight, did you take insulin at 8 p.m.? If so, that dose you're taking might be too high. What if it's your long acting dose? Well, that's a little trickier to figure out. Long acting insulin is supposed to be slow and steady, but we don't always need the same amount of insulin throughout the day. And simple variables like, hey, exercising at 8 p.m. after work can make you extra sensitive to insulin through the night. But if you lower your long acting dose, does that mean you're gonna be high later in the day when that dose is working for you? but it's not working for you at midnight when you're going low? If you don't already adjust your own insulin doses, you probably aren't comfortable starting today. 
and that's okay. But what you do need to know is that if you are experiencing frequent lows, daily lows or daily highs, and you're frustrated and confused, you should reach out to your healthcare team. You don't have to wait three months or six months down the road to talk to them about these frequent lows or highs. Send a message in your hospital patient portal, call them up on the phone, say, I'm having trouble. Take action. You should not be enduring daily frequent highs and lows. The ability to look at your insulin doses and your blood sugar levels is a big part of thriving with any type of diabetes. Being able to step back and say, whoa, I see a pattern here. Every day after breakfast, I'm going low. Or every day after lunch, I'm going high. And then you take action by adjusting your insulin doses on your own or with your healthcare team based on your understanding of insulin and diabetes management. Here's an example. For years, I have taken long-acting insulin Glargine, also known as Lantus, and I have never had a problem of it wearing out too soon before that 24-hour mark. I take it before bed. I don't like taking it in the morning. I need my insulin on board and powerful in the morning when I'm most insulin resistant. So I started having these really stubborn high blood sugars between 6 and 10 p.m every night, no matter what I ate. It didn't make any sense. I was taking so much insulin for my meals. Why was my blood sugar stuck in the high 200s for hours and wouldn't come down? At first, I was beating myself up. I was thinking, man, you are terrible at counting carbs lately. You are terrible at dosing mealtime insulin to cover your meals. You're just not doing it well enough. You're being lazy or forgetful or something. But I kept trying and trying and I was like, okay, I'm trying my best and this is still happening and it doesn't make any sense. So I took another approach. I said, wait, maybe this isn't my fault. Maybe my body needs more background insulin in the evening. For some reason, my body is processing my long-acting insulin glargine lantis dose quicker than usual, and it's not lasting a full 24 hours. Now I already know I cannot increase my nighttime dose any higher than eight units. I know that if I take more than eight units of long-acting insulin glargine, I will plummet at 3 a.m. I just know this about my body, but I needed more long acting insulin on board in the evening. So here's what I did instead. I took 20% of my long acting dose and moved it to 1.30 in the afternoon so that it would be kicking in full strength four or five hours later around dinner time. Now I'm not having those stubborn highs and I can take a normal amount of insulin to cover my meals. And when I say normal, I mean normal in relation to the rest of my insulin doses for the day. And then I'm taking the rest of my dose for my long acting insulin at bed and it's working really well. Moral of the story is look at the bigger picture. You should not be experiencing daily lows and daily highs, even though you're technically doing all of the things you're supposed to be doing to manage your diabetes. And that doesn't mean being perfect, but like you're taking your insulin when you're supposed to take your insulin and you're going super low or super high, something's not right in your doses. Talk to your healthcare team, take action. And if you want a little more help around dosing insulin, around exercise, check out my book, Exercise with Type 1 Diabetes, available on Amazon.